Hey guys, it's Key here and Richard from Lollerman. So uh, today we're talking about Nottingham. Nottingham is such a workho workhorse in the Lollerman range. And it's one of those amazingly versatile yeasts and some people who just think it's an ale yeast probably don't realize how versatile it actually is because uh, it's, it's amazing how it can go up to high alcohol tolerance, so it can get up to those high percentages. But also, you know, even for lagers and really clean beers, it can be used at those low temperatures as well, which is kind of cool. And um, yeah, we actually got some beer here uh, from Mismatch Brewing, it's a barley wine. So this was a limited re release a while ago, so we're lucky to get our hands on some of this. And um, yeah, basically it's interesting to ha how, how they've actually used this beer to bring out some of the ester production. And for some of those English ales and stuff like that, I think it, all, it can be fantastic when you push the temperatures up. So Mismatch Brewing, or Tom Wood, uh, was nice enough to allow us to use his brand and his beer on this video. Um, and he was mentioning how he actually used the, uh, fermented this one out at 22 degrees to get some of that ester production for the barley wine. Um, and, and those classic kind of like, I guess, English ale esters uh, sort of what fruity. I sort of have always yeah. sort of seen that seem to come out of it, I suppose, yep. as a, yep. fruity esters. Uh, but Tom as well mentioned that uh, you know, even sometimes when he does like a sort of faux lager, I guess, and wants to get really clean results, he ferments them right down at 12 degrees as well, which is kind of cool to have such an amazing yeast that you can use across the board. Yeah, absolutely. It's a hugely versatile yeast and like you say, wide temperature range, 10 to 25 degrees. Yeah. So, you know, that's a very versatile yeast, which gives it a, you know, a lot of opportunity to shine in a variety of situations. Yep, yep. So where the yeast come from, actually, Richard? Do you want to tell so us a bit of background? Is, this is actually one of our heritage strains. So this yep. has been in our, uh, the Lalleman Brewing portfolio since 1992. So it's just celebrating its 30th anniversary <laughs> yeah. of being a, a Lalleman Brewing strain. Yep. Um, obviously, as the name implies, it's uh, yeah. named after the classic English town of uh, Nottingham, yep. home of Robin Hood, uh, yep. and disputedly three of the oldest pubs in the UK. So yep. Yep. there is a, there's a lot of sort of definitely drinking history in Nottingham. Yep. Uh, it's also on the banks of the River Trent, so yep. similar water source to Burton on Trent. Yep, so, you yep. know, classic uh, home for pale ales, English bitters, yep. um, you know, that sort of style of beer. So works really well um, in those in those beer styles in particular. Yeah, yeah, I see. So when when we say it can go up to high AVBs, where's the sort of limit, I suppose? Uh, you know, where, where, where can we take this yeast and uh, what, what can we do with it? We, we say that it has an alcohol tolerance of up to 14%. Uh, yep. Obviously, within that, there are some caveats. You know, your yep. sugar profile, your, you know... Um, uh, other you know other factors can come into play, but yep. you know this yeast will happily, and we have you know have brewers push this up to you know fourteen, sometimes fifteen percent with a really good um, you know nutrient regime and a lot of care and attention. Yep. Um, you know we've had like quad red IPAs. We've yeah. had you know you know big barley wines. Yep. Um, so you know we go really going into those mid teens in terms of um, in terms of alcohol tolerance. Yep. 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 So if we're trying to go, uh, you know, your typical kind of like. Uh, uh, ale, I suppose, or English ale, where you want to get a bit of S production. So, what what's the what, what are those things you know that we want to hit uh, during our sort of mashing profile and uh, uh, throughout the fermentation profile? Uh, so we're probably going to stick pretty traditional. So yep. you know, if you're using an infusion mash and just yep. you know, mash it at 65 degrees for yep. you know 60 to 90 minutes, yep. uh, you know, then raise up to mash out. Yep. Uh, we'll get you a very balanced, classic yep. uh, sugar profile. Uh, in terms of fermentation temperature, you know, with appropriate pitch rate. So if we're saying you're going to get like a 1048, 12 plate of wood, something like that, yep. you know, we're really only looking at about just over half a gram per liter in terms of pitch yep. rate. So, yep. you know, good, low. Yeah, pretty uh, pitch efficient. Rate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yep. And we really want to be fermenting in sort of the mid range of the profile, mid to high range. So we will be yep. going somewhere around 16 to 22 yep. in that ballpark. Yep. Uh, if you want to push the ester profile for, say, um, you know, an ESB, something yep. like that, then probably go in 20 to 22. Yep. Uh, is you know is a good ballpark uh, area for your fermentation temperature. If you're going yep. for more of a pale ale, want some of the hops to shine, probably backing that down to somewhere between 16, 18, maybe maxing out at 20 towards the end, just to complete fermentation. Would yeah, be I see. A much more neutral, neutral profile. Yeah, I see. And uh, when is yeast nutrient nutrient necessary? Is it when we go up to those higher percentages? Do you think that's where we need to sort of bring a bit of yeast nutrient in? I'd always recommend uh, well. yeast nutrient yeah. regardless. Uh, yeah, okay. Definitely just you know, giving good yeast health. Yep. Uh, however, if we're going to really push 
the yeah. ABV tolerance and the ABV content of this, then we really need to focus on nutrition. So using yep. something like Cervomyces, so we get in um, a good level of bioavailable zinc. Yep. This helps to stimulate multitrios uptake, yeah. which is uh, going to be very critical in getting yeah. complete fermentation in high yeah. ABV. Um, make sure that the yeast doesn't get tired. Uh, yeah. We can also use a bit of um, a formulated nutrient such as yep. uh, yeast life extra, yep. uh, which uh, will give us some of the more of the trace minerals, trace elements, ensures that we're not getting you know too much sulfur produced as well. Yep. Uh, and you can actually sort of feed it during fermentation as well, just to ensure yeah. that you're you know you're supplementing, particularly the the younger cells that have uh, come early in fermentation, to supplementing yep. them to ensure that they are able to ferment all the sugars that are available and tolerate yep. the, uh, the high levels of alcohol. Yeah, yeah. And conversely, if we're looking to make like, a, I guess, a faux lager and uh, use, use, use the Nottingham, what are the best tips you can give us there? Uh, so with this, we're going, we can push it right down to 10 degrees. So we yep. can sort of ferment in the range of around 10 to 14 degrees, 10 yep. to 15 degrees if you're... Um, uh, sort of looking for a little bit more character, but it will start to become more ale the higher yep. the temperature becomes. Yep. Uh, if we're down at the very low end of the scale, we get very, very minimal ester production. So yep. we're allowing those, um, you know, the, the, the lager raw materials to, to shine yeah. through. Uh, we're not going to get necessarily a lager like character, so it's probably yep. more, you know, it's more faux lager, Aussie yeah. draft sort yeah. of thing. So we're getting a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit of ester profile, not a huge amount. Uh, and less of the, you know, the sort of the sulfury um, yep. DMS like lager character that can come through. Yep. Um, with that, if you do, if you are fermenting down at the lower temperature range, it's important to know that you will need to increase your pitch rate you yep. to ensure that the yeast is population is sufficient for that temperature. Yep. So if we're sort of down at around about ten degrees, then we're probably going to push it from, um, you know using half gram per liter for an ale, we'll probably push it up to maybe 0 0.7, 0 0.75 uh, yep. grams per liter. Yep. Um, if you, you know, in that ballpark of around 12 play though. Yep. Uh, yep. But obviously, yeah, using our pitch rate calculator, yep. it would take all those factors into account. Yeah. Uh, and will give you your ideal pitch rate. Yeah, I see. Doing that temperature. Another thing that I want to talk about is also stuck fermentations because I find like uh, Nottingham is such a beast and it's got good attenuation. It flocks out really well. It's often one of those good yeast just to have as a backup in the fridge like i don't have too many stuck fermentations these days because i'm sort of very careful in what i pitch and making sure like uh, the health of the yeast is really good and uh and also the the, the profile the fermentation profile and the temperatures are kept pretty tightly within within a certain range i guess but certainly when i was starting brewing it used to happen from time to time and um you know i think having a backup pack of yeast of nottingham in the fridge so you, you get a stuck fermentation it's one of those ones you can throw in and help finish it off is that sort of Fair to say, Richard. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd, I'd, yeah it's certainly recommend yeah. whether you're commercial or home brewer, just having yeah. some Nottingham on standby because yeah. you can you can save your bacon in a lot of situations. Yeah, and you know any brewer that says they haven't had a stock fermentation is either not being honest or yeah. just incredibly <laughs> fortunate um, yeah. so, to do. But it's, yeah. it is so versatile, and you know it can yeah. handle the higher ABV. So if you've got a big ABV beer yeah. fermenting with yep. another strain. Uh, yeah. And it suddenly just stalls. Nottingham yep. is able to um, restart those because of its high level of you know ethanol tolerance and yeah, just yeah. how robust it is at growing. Yeah. It can tolerate uh, quite high levels of, of uh, acid as well, so you yep. can chuck it in to restart a, a sour beer or yeah. something like that. Um, yeah. So incredibly versatile in that respect. Yeah. And that's really tough because a lot of the yeast strains uh, that are out there, if you chuck them in after you've already got that alcohol present, they suck that up and just die straight away. So it's like one of those things that Nottingham is, is probably one of the best choices uh, to recover from that, that type of situation. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And also, you know, if you're, um, if you're not fortunate to have, you know, temperature control fridge or something like that and your, yeah. um, your temperature of the, the, uh, the ferment does drop below the optimum for your primary yeast, yeah. because Nottingham can tolerate down to 10 degrees, yep. you're able to restart it at much yeah. cooler temperatures than a lot of other ale yeast. So yeah. that's one of its other, you know, versatilities is yep. that you know if, if during winter your fermentation yeah. temperature drops suboptimal yeah. and will you know render a lot of yeast uh, in you know ineffective in fermentation yeah. knowing them is going to be the one that saves your day and also yeah. if you're adding it towards the end of fermentation it's not going to add any flavor profile you're going to preserve yeah. the original yeast flavor profile yeah and all this is there is just to complete the fermentation yeah, 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 absolutely. Uh, another thing to probably talk about is also when we talk about co-pitching yeast and putting in in, in co-pitch, I know there's a few 
different sort of co-pitches we've sort of covered in the past. But Nottingham's one of those ones that often comes up as a co-pitch. Is that fair to say? Uh, Richard? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, you know, you can use it as a co-pitch if you're um, pitching it almost, you know, in a similar similar manner. So if you're yep. pitching another multi-trio as positive yeast and you're looking yep. for it to get you get more flavour out of one yeast and yeah. then the robustness of another, yep. you can use maybe like 70% of your flavour producing yeast and then 30% yeah. of your Nottingham just to ensure that you've got, yeah. um, you know, a nice balance. Um, yeah. You can also do a, a bit of a cereal pitch. So if yeah. you say you're loving your flavour profile of a... Um, yeah. Uh, a multitrio's negative yeast, yeah. but you actually want it to ferment multitrio's, yeah. then you can start it off with the um, with that primary yeast, and yeah. once it gets to a certain point, just chuck in the Nottingham. Uh, yeah. Works well for trying to use a yeast that's not tolerant of high alcohol, oh, yeah. to, in a high alcohol beer. Yeah. So you get, yeah. Yeah, get the flavour profile in the first couple of days, days. Yeah. and then Nottingham will just finish the job. Yeah, it'd be good to see a bit more of that because I think a lot of people, like, they look at some yeast strains which are able to, um, you know, get a great flavour profile, but they shy away from it because they don't get that attenuation uh, or they're trying to get those high alcohol uh, levels and stuff like that. And uh, usually, yeah, I think it's not something that comes up a lot in home brewing, I guess, the uh, cereal pitching. That's right. So, it's, um, it's probably it's more really of a... Um, it's a it's a, a easier guess than yeah. using a co-pitching. Co-pitching can be a lot of trial and error to yeah. get the right um, the right balance and ensure that yeah. one yeast or the wrong yeast is not dominating. Yeah. Um, cereal pitching is a little bit more straightforward yeah. uh, because you are simply putting the second yeast in there to get the the fermentation parameters that you that you want in terms yeah. of attenuation and alcohol content. Yep. Right, and then you just have your primary yeast for mostly for flavour. Flavour, no yeah, in that first few days of all that uh, sort of aerobic fermentation, I suppose, yep. you get on getting all that flavour. Yeah, all right, no worries. Well, uh, thanks so much for your time, Richard. That's uh, sort of really filled in uh, a few of those gaps. I think uh, a lot of people didn't realise where they could use Nottingham. I certainly have, uh, you know, benefited from you know, restarting <laughs> a stuck fermentation. I remember when I did do that as well, the yeast was like even well past use by date. I probably shouldn't <laughs> say this on the video, but it was like well out of use by date. And it still, it just sort of shows how robust the yeast was. And I, and I had nothing else at hand. I chucked it in and, you know, finished the job off. And often it's one of those situations of time to necessarily drive out and quickly pick some up or it's on a Sunday and no home brew stores are open. So it's just such a handy one just to have there yeah. uh, ready to go. Um, and yeah, if you do, uh, if you do yeah. encounter a, a stuck yeah. fermentation and need a, need a bit of a saviour, yeah. uh, we've got a, a great little best practice guide on our website that we yep. can link in below. Oh, uh, sure. Yeah. And uh, just so that it gives you some, uh, some tips and tricks on how to yep. restart your fermentation. But Make sure you've got a packet of nothing in the fridge before you get to that stage. Yeah, definitely. No worries. Yeah, so I'll put that link in uh, in the description below. And if you want to have, if you want to send us any other questions, definitely uh, also put in the comments below, and I'll try to answer them myself. If I can't, I'll send them off to Richard if it's a really curly question. Um, and of course, subscribe to this YouTube channel, bottom right hand corner, hit subscribe now. And we've also got a uh, Facebook homebrew community group too, which you can join and talk about all the yeast and all the other gear that we sell too. But uh, yeah, thanks so much, Richard, for coming in. And definitely, if you haven't tried any of the mismatch brewing uh, beers, Tom Wood does a fantastic job. He's got so many awesome beers out there. It's been a long-term customer of ours. And um, you know, as he's gone through his home brewing career, turned that into home, home brew, he's gone from home brewer using a lot of our stuff and now into the commercial brewery and uh, yeah, definitely worth checking him out. So I'll, I'll put a link to uh, the Mismatch Brewing website um, and you can basically buy some of the beers from them or one of their distributors. All right, thanks for that. And uh, yeah, thanks again, Richard. Really appreciate it. Thanks Cheers. for coming in. Cheers.